Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, uh, talk about Mayweather Pacquiao, uh, Freddie Roach, and Pacquiao's game plans. Alright, uh, we can only assume on so much on uh, what we would think that they would, uh, do, um, against each other. Uh, Team Mayweather isn't putting anything out in regards to their game plans uh, or strategy that they plan on using. Um, the only thing we have heard was a while back when uh, Mayweather said that he, you know, he, he wouldn't be a fool and sit there and just slug it out with Manny. Uh, and that's kind of contradicting uh, itself by what we're hearing lately that he he's you know wanting to, to to develop power in his punches and stand a little more toe to toe and in the pocket with Manny a little bit more uh, than he usually does. Uh, but uh, that that's not realistic, you know. I I would see him, you know, you know, you you dance with the one who brought you, uh, and what got him here is you know boxing. Not slugging it out, not standing in the pocket with a power puncher and a volume puncher. Um, you know, he, he's going to play from the outside. Uh, and also about the power punching, you know, um, if the, if you, you know who I'm talking to. If you want to say who you are, feel free to in the, the group or in the comment section here. Uh, I'm not going to put his name out there. I don't know if he would want that. I don't know if it would be good for the kid uh, who he knows who is sparring with Floyd Mayweather. Uh, he's one of the sparring partners for Floyd. He's a younger guy, uh, just just turning pro. Um, I'm not sure if he is a pro yet or if he is, uh, you know, turning pro, and, but he's not fighting amateur no more. I know that. I think he is. He has turned pro, though. I don't know if he's had his first pro fight or not. All speculation. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure right there. But I know he is sparring with Floyd and did have some work with him, uh, you know, a couple of times. Uh, you know, a couple of times just recently, you know. And uh, one of the questions <clears throat> my buddy asked him was about the, the power punching. And, uh, the you know, he's a kid. He said he has never been in the ring with anybody like that. Uh, that it was, you know, so, so something completely special. Um, that it, basically saying, you know, the Floyd is that good, the kid. Uh, well, you gotta, you do have to realize, you know, he's a kid too. Uh, you know, and Floyd's been in this game for years. But he was uh, immensely impressed with uh, Mayweather's skills. Um, but he said his punching power is, isn't all that at all. You know, it's nothing to write home about. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, he's not increasing punching power. Okay, well, we're going to get the exact same Mayweather we've been getting. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't think we're going to get the Mayweather from Maidana 2. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be the same old Mayweather. You know, he's just going to be a, a little more on his game. That's all, you know. Uh, so, you know, we kind of know his game plan, like the the, the general game plan, I, I suppose. But the little ins and outs and tweaks to it, no. They're, they're really not letting anything slide. Freddie Roach, on the other hand, is doing some talking, all right. Um, he said a couple of things in particular about how he's having, you know, some of the guys, um, mainly uh, the two that I talked about, because um, those are the guys that he likes to talk about. Uh, Kenneth Sims Jr., who give a big shout out to Kenneth Sims Jr. Uh, you know, I had heard of him uh, when he turned pro. You know, I heard of him, but I didn't see anything on him. Uh, the kid is a Mayweather clone and has really, really good talent. Uh, he's someone to look out for. You know, um, if I was a big promotional company, I'd sign the kid up. I would. Uh, I see a lot of talent with him. Um, he fights exactly like Floyd, but more exciting. You know, he uh, he's a little more explosive uh, and throws a 
combinations. You know, he's a, a fluid combination puncher. Um, and then you have uh, Dierry Jean. He, um, you know, similar to Mayweather. You know, not he's nothing like uh, Kenneth Sims is with Mayweather, but similar. You know, he he fights out of the, he'll go from the Philly show to the high guard. Uh, likes to keep his hand low, pop the jab, loves his straight right, his lead right, um, and throws a left hook, uh, similar to, to Floyd. Like I said, they, they'll they use um, Kenneth Sims for center of the ring shit uh, to where the speed is going to be the factor, and I can imagine that they would use uh, Dierry Jean for like uh, Floyd trying to rope a dope Manny. Okay, um, and both of these guys are, you know, top level. I mean, the kid is uh, Sims. He's a kid, you know, he's young. Uh, has five fights, but he's like 195 and 20 or something in the pros. Or in the amateurs, I mean. Uh, really a, a blue chipper prospect. Um, fast, real fast. Uh, and he emulates Mayweather. Like, that has, had to have been the guy he looked up to and wanted to, to fight just like. Um, and he does. You know, so I, I would imagine they would use him for, you know, like I said, you know, the speed factor. And uh, the one thing Freddie was saying is that he's trying, he's getting these guys to throw a lot of, uh, a lot of lead rights. You know, every time um, he wants them to get Manny out of position and then hurry up and throw a lead right, you know, to, to try and smack him. Uh, basically to get Manny to where, you know, he's going to be fast enough and sharp enough to not get put out of position, or if he does, to defend himself properly. And uh, the main thing is to get, hurry up, get in position, and fire off and counter. They want him to be able to, to see when the lead right is coming, because, you know, a lot of times Floyd will telegraph that right hand. You know, he kicks his back leg. He does it all in one motion, so it's not as telegraphed as, um, you know, some guys do it. You know, he tends to do it all in one motion. He throws his back leg back as he pulls his hand and then drives it forward. Uh, but there's things there that if Manny's watching his feet, he'll know exactly when that right is coming. He can duck his head down. Oh, he'd be this way. No, wait, wait, what am I talking about? He'd be this way. He can duck his head. As soon as he sees that back leg flop back, you know, just fire your straight left and then keep coming through with them straight punches. And that's what he's uh, trying to get Manny to work on, you know, to know when that straight right is coming and uh, counter it, you know. Uh, they're doing the same with the left hook, but Manny is good with the left hooks. Uh, he, he, It's just natural in him to throw his combo and swoop and weave and turn under. So, you know, everybody tries to hit him with that left, but it's just, you know, being that he's a southpaw, he just puts his head right in their chest and spins around them, and, you know, you're not going to get any power on the shot, even if you did hit him. Um, you know, Floyd is, you know, at pot shotting, he's probably the best in the business, you know. Uh, so they're going to have to have these guys do a lot of pot shotting also. Um, and then another thing that he, Freddie Roach, talked freely about was that they want to get um, ahead on points early in the rounds. You know, like, say, that first 45 seconds, they want Manny to be explosive, put pressure on Floyd, uh, you know, win that part of the round, get up on the points, you know, and then kind of like maybe lay back and uh, in Freddie Roach's words uh, you know he said um, make Floyd understand that he's gonna lose this round if he doesn't uh, get busy and do something to win the round meaning he's gonna have to come forward and throw some punches and then when he you know is realizing he's down on points he has to do something to win this round he comes to attack Manny opens up with him, uh, tries to score, tries to either KO him or, you know, land some really good shots and win the round. You know, uh, they want, you know, they want to, Roach has a plan to where he wants to get Floyd uh, 
to have to engage, you know, and what's a better way than, you know, than to get up on points fast in every round, uh, then Floyd's going to have to do something and he won't be able to just run and pot shot because Manny can literally just stay away, you know, uh, just use his footwork and stay away. Um, so Floyd would have to buckle down, you know, uh, plant his feet and march forward and, you know, get busy. And that's when, you know, the action will happen. Uh, I, there's no doubt in my mind we're going to see some great exchanges. Uh, I don't think that, that Floyd will stink to join out. Uh, he's not going to, he's not going to have a choice. He's going to have to fight. Uh, not every minute of every round or nothing like that, but there's going to be moments in every round though where he is going to have to fight you know and that's a big part of their plan you know um they want floyd to they want to force him to have to fight and then when they get them opportunities that's manny's bread and butter right there that's when he goes to work really you know so they're letting some shit slip um you know should he have said that no he shouldn't have uh, i wouldn't have you know, because if I'm Floyd, now I'm thinking, the very beginning of every round, it's time for heavy defense and counter punching. You know, so he should have never said that, but uh, he did. You know, and now did he say that just because he's lying or, or and he's fucking with them, and that ain't even the real plan? Um, it's possible, but that's a really good plan. So. Why would he, you know, even if that ain't their number one plan uh, and they have something else in, else in store and that's like, you know, plan C in case of type shit, uh, I still wouldn't have told it, you know, but he did. So, you know, that's just 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 what it is. I mean, he said it. And another thing um, about like the corner men, uh, how Roach feels like, you know, Manny has the edge and uh, coach slash cornerman department uh, because as Roach puts it um, uh, Manny has had somebody to to teach him you know new things uh, all the time and groom him whereas you know Roach believes a Floyd pretty much uh, taught himself and is his own trainer and coach which I, I can uh, kind of uh, agree with him there, you know, because Floyd was taught young. I mean, yeah, don't don't get me wrong, you know, but in the last eight or nine years, uh, he's honestly only needed a coach to, like, hold the mitts and, you know, to spit bucket. I mean, and that's a compliment to Floyd, you know. His ring IQ fucking smokes Rodgers uh, and seniors, you know. So, so no matter what they tell him, if he don't feel that it's right, he's not going to do it, and he's going to do what uh, he wants. And he's probably going to make the right decision uh, every time, you know. Uh, so, you know, it, it is true, you know, because, you know, I've said it before, Floyd is like uh, the Peyton Manning of boxing. You know, he's the, the player, the fighter, and the coach. You know, he's, call, he's calling the plays. Uh, so, so similar to like Jordan too. I mean, he's calling the plays, but Roach feels, you know, and, and, uh, that, you know, that's, that's, uh, a downfall for him. Some people would look at it as it's not, and I can understand both sides, you know, um, look back to like a Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, you know, he, a lot of fights, he would do what, whatever the hell he wanted to do. You know, if, if he felt he should box, he'd box. Even if his coach said slug it out, he wouldn't. You know, um, every once in a while, if his coach said, you know, yo, you're down, uh, you need a knockout, then he would go out and be like, well, all right, I'll go knock this guy out then. And a lot of times he would do it. So, uh, I mean, you know, he was great like that, though. You know, and there, there's a big difference between Sugar Ray Robinson and Floyd, regardless of what some people think. You know, but you know, Floyd's ring IQ is it's it's like it's like a Bernard Hopkins. You know, even though Bernard you know uses coaches and they help him tremendously, uh, those kind of fighters that you know have been in the game so long and rely on craft, 
uh, they they know what to do in a big fight situation like this though um, a coach is uh, ne necessary you know you're not gonna see everything and that one little thing that you didn't pick up that last round might be the thing that gets you fucking knocked out in the next round um, so he does want the best possible coach in his corner and I'd pick Roger if I was Floyd, because I do believe Roger is a better coach for Floyd than Senior. Uh, you know, Roger is more honest with Floyd. Uh, Senior, you know, Senior is honestly living vicariously through Floyd. Senior has a huge heart, uh, like a fighter's heart. You know, he is a, a fighter's fighter. Like, you know, back in his day, I mean, he chose to be a fighter. And with Floyd, Senior made him become a fighter, okay? Uh, and, you know, Senior thinks that Floyd should do or be able to do a lot of things that, you know, he's not comfortable doing. Uh, Roger more understands... Uh, his fighter on a more realistic level. You know, you, you'll notice in sports a lot of times a lot of fathers think their sons can do anything and everything. You know, they they have, they're, they're too confident in their son's abilities. Uh, and that's why the majority of father-son combinations don't work out. I mean, you've seen, you know, the ones, you know, the, the Roy Jones and, you know, the Shane Mosley's and you know, and a lot of some, I'm not a lot of, I mean, some do work out, but the majority of them don't. Uh, unless they actually realize, let's bring in an outside trainer and the dad will just be like, you know, the assistant. Uh, that's okay. You know, but I would, I'd have Roger in that corner. Really, I would. You know, Roger is uh, a little more, on, he's just more honest. You know, flat out he is. Um, I, I could see Senior giving him bad advice. Uh, like if he was down going and telling him to slug it out or something. Instead of, you know, just building up Floyd's confidence and being like, no, you can't outbox this guy. Uh, and give him, uh, like, precise instructions. You know, like, uh, s stay to this guy's right. Just keep keep pushing right. Even though he's going to be pushing to your left, you push right harder and keep ripping uh, that left and uh, straight right, you know, just keep keep the jab. Just some kind of instructions to, to keep Mayweather focused if the fight gets so tough that he gets flustered, you know. Uh, I, I, I think he should have Roger, you know, and that's crazy that Roach even said that too because when it comes down to it, he should have Roger. And you would think maybe Roach said that uh, as a mind game, so they didn't use Roger, which is possible. Um, but, you know, I mean, come on, man. Uh, it, with a fight like this, you should use the best guy you got. And um, the best guy for Floyd is Roger. You know, Roger is the one who took him through all of them fights. His dad might have got him through the amateurs early, but, you know, when it came to the pro career, that, that was Roger. You know, that was Roger all the way. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, man, Floyd's Floyd's ring IQ is, you know, it's, uh, it's like uh, it's like off the charts when it comes to, you know, a boxing IQ. Uh, so like I was saying, it doesn't matter what these guys tell him. He And plus he's a narcissist. You know, he is going to do what he wants to do. Um, and then, you, you, <clears throat> you know, with Floyd... <coughs> Excuse me. With Roach talking about, um, you know, Manny having someone to, to, to groom him and, you know, keep teaching him new things every camp and shit like that. I mean, you can look at it like this, you know. Uh, look at Floyd, you know, 10 years ago. And then look at him today. You know, you, nothing has changed. You know, he hasn't added any new wrinkles to his game. Um... All he did is get more defensive. Uh, that's about it, you know. Ever since he became like money, money way, money may, he uh, became more defensive. You know, uh, pretty boy was you know more explosive and offensive. 
Uh, once he became money, you know, the, the shoulder roll became just the, the dominant uh, trait in his boxing. You know, he started just being very defensive. Uh, and, I mean, it's took him this far, but, you know, that's about the only thing he's added. You know, and it's not that he added it, he always had it, he just started to use it more. Um, but other than that, I mean, tell me what he's, you know, what did he add new? I mean, if, if, if anything, I think he was a better fighter when he was pretty boy, you know? Uh, I think everyone does, you know? The guy was actually exciting, um, he'd fuck people up, you know? Now it's... You know, he's stinking joints out. I mean, he, he would have people talking about, holy shit, did you just see that performance when he was pretty boy? And now he walks out of the crowd and, you know, they're booing him. And they're not booing him just because he won. They're booing him because he stunk the joint out. I mean, that, that's not good, you know. So it's like, you know, and I, and I don't care if he's not losing, you know. Um, you can always make yourself better. There's no such thing as uh, a perfect fighter. You know, you're never, you know, uh, no fighter ever reaches their full potential, you know, but you should always be developing and adding new shit to your game. And Floyd's content with just kind of being Floyd and staying where he's at. I mean, like I said, look at him 10 years ago and look at him today. Really nothing has changed. He just became more defensive, you know, which was it, was that even a good thing? It was a good thing in terms of keeping that O. Um, it, it saved him from losing some fights, but a better fighter? I, I don't know. You know, I don't know, you know, because he always had that, you know. Uh, they took away the explosiveness he had, you know, um, when he would just let his hands go for a whole entire round, you know, there'd really be no defense, you know, he'd, uh, shoulder to shoulder with you, and it wouldn't be the shoulder roll D, bobbing a weaving, tucking his chin, uppercuts, I mean, he'd really be working every shot when he was pretty boy, you know, anywhere from 130 to 140. Once he hit welterweight, it, like his whole, uh, everything changed. You know, the, he really just, uh, the shoulder roll took over everything, you know, and I think it, it made, it surely made him a less exciting fighter, you know, but either way, he could have just kept, he could have added a lot of wrinkles to his game, and quite frankly, he hasn't, you know, then you can look at the other other fighter, you know, you can look at Manny 10 years ago and uh, compare him to the, like the 2014 version, and he's, you know, basically just become a whole nother fighter, a completely different fighter, you know, um, and, and Manny grows with each camp, you know, in each fight, I mean, shit, when he was, uh, you know, he was a flyweight, you know, when he became lineal champ as a flyweight, uh, you know, he, he did that, you know, on his own, so he was damn good then, uh, but, you know, he's, like I said, a completely different fighter now, completely, uh, he still has resemblances of that guy, but if you watch a tape of him now, and a tape of him from when he was a flyweight, you're like, wow, like, you know, it almost looks like he sucked back then. He's so much better now. You know what I mean? Even though he didn't, don't care. I'm not saying that. You know, um, he's just a much, much better fighter now. That's all. Uh, because he kept adding new shit to his game. Um, uh, every fight, every time something gave him trouble, uh, you know, he learned how to deal with it and then came back better. You know, um... Like I was saying, as a flyweight, you can watch him from the flyweight, then watch him in, like, 2005, uh, from, like, 2003 to 2005. Um, you know, he was the featherweight champ, you know, in fighting featherweight. And compare, you know, that to the flyweight, and he changed dramatic, uh, drastically and dramatically from Freddie Roach. You know, and then you can look at from when he was a featherweight to when he was a junior lightweight, and he was better then. 
you know, then, I mean, uh, from junior lightweight to, you know, um, what, what, uh, junior middleweight, just, like, two, I think it was two years later, uh, that's when people started calling him, you know, a complete fighter, and, you know, uh, the perfect fighter, and all that, and, like, and I know the, 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 the saying, and I understand it, and I mean, I, I even use it sometime, but, um, you know, no fighter's ever complete, you know, they're, they're just not, no fighter's ever complete, you know, and Manny sure wasn't complete, uh, he had, you know, he was a two-handed fighter then, and, you know, started using his footwork better and everything like that, he was a much better fighter, but he was not complete, um, he got better, you know, continued to get better, uh, he sure as hell wasn't finished developing, um, as a fighter, you know, and then in the, the first fight with Bradley and the third fight with, uh, Marquez, <clears throat> you know, he started, I don't know if it was politics, the religion, uh, just dominating and getting lazy, but he started to get, like, complacent, you know, and you could just see it in his, uh, you know, kind of lackluster performances, I guess, uh, they were still great, and, you know, there was flashes of, uh, what he was doing previously, but it, it wasn't the same, Manny. You could tell he was happy with, you know, just doing enough to win, just winning the rounds and winning on a decision, uh, and, uh, you know, it cost him in the Bradley fight, even though he did win the fight, uh, and got fucking robbed, but, you know, he probably could have knocked uh, Bradley out in that fight, or at least dropped him a couple times if he would have been, you know, the Pacquiao from uh, a year and a half earlier, you know, and kept his uh, explosiveness and wasn't so lazy. I mean, you could even tell by the shape he was in. Uh, he was still ripped and everything, but it wasn't just, like, the Manny Pacquiao from a year and a half earlier. He was getting complacent, and it could have been from all the outside distractions, too. You know, he, he was just, you know, losing that fire. Uh, you know, you sit on top long enough, and he started to get bored with it, I honestly believe. Um, you know, and then, and then you go, like, and then, he, oh, and then he, you know, enters the, the, the fourth fight with, uh, with Marquez, you know, and he was talking, uh, the whole build-up to that fight, you know, I, I, I need the KO, uh, he was even, him and Freddie were going over it, like, the, you, even if it's a decision, it, it don't even count. You need the knockout uh, just to also bring his career back to the top um, because of those lackluster performances in Marquez 3 and Bradley 1 and to just put a stop to all of this talk with Marquez. And, you know, in the rounds before he got KO'd, he was a uh, vintage Manny Pacquiao. You know, he was looking as good as he ever did, and he was fucking pulverizing Marquez, you know, I mean, he really busted Marquez up bad, you know, but he got careless, reckless, he thought he had Marquez out of there, uh, and he wanted that KO so bad that he went for it and ran into the right hand that Marquez was, you know, trying to time him with all night, uh, actually, for the last fucking three, four fights, even so that as from the second half of the first fight till he hit him with it, he kept practicing that punch to land on him, you know, and eventually he, he got caught with it. Um, and and he, even Marquez said, you know, that was the last punch I had in me. Um, so even he admitted, you know, that if he didn't land uh, that punch, he was, he was gone. You know, he was out of there. He was, he was done, you know, but like, what did Manny do after that knockout? Dusted it off, took a year off, uh, came, I mean, came back uh, fighting, you know, better, better than before. You know, he finally was that fight, he was fighting smarter, the smartest he ever fought. Uh, still explosive, still daring, still took risks, but more calculated and more careful risks. And you saw that in the Bradley fight in particular. Because, uh, you know, Bradley was going for that KO with that same punch. Uh, but he was on to it now. All right, it's like you're not going to, he's he's not the guy you're going to get 
uh, with this, you're not going to get them the same way twice. You know, if you find a way to beat them, you're not going to beat them again that way. Uh, Morales, you know, same thing. You are not going to beat the guy twice the same way. And it's like, the, the, that's crazy, but it, it shows how good he is, you know, because you can match him against someone who should beat him, um, and they might beat him once, but it's like, I dare you to try it again, because it ain't going to work the second time, you know. So he learned from the jab, from, from the Marquez fight, he learned from the jab. Now he takes everyone's jab away. Uh, the the Morales or the the Marquez fight, he got hit with the right hand. Now you know um, if you can punch, you're not hitting him with the right hand. I mean, you might land a couple here and there, but he's gonna take a little something off of him now. You know, he's much uh, an aggressive fighter who comes throwing punches and attacking you is gonna get hit with shots. All right, there's no way around it. You know, if you're opening yourself up, uh, you're going to have to eat some leather. You know, so he can take some shots, but he's not going to get hit with nothing crazy. You know, if you're throwing him crazy bombs like Bradley was, uh, that shit ain't going to work. You know, you're going to have to be way smarter than that with it. You just are, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, he, what? Took the like I said though he took the uh, the year off came back had a tune up with Rios um, put on an amazing performance against Rios I don't care what the fuck someone wants to say against Rios I mean Mike Tyson who's one of my you know if I had to pick one like one of my childhood heroes uh, he said that was you know the the most masterful masterful performance he's seen in recent memory. All right, uh, he's not going to lie. I mean, it was clear as day that that was a fucking brilliant performance. Uh, the guy did it all. You know, he was doing defense and offense at the same time while pulverizing a guy. You know, making it extremely exciting but taking no damage. You know, uh, he fought a perfect fight. You know, like, like Tyson says, it was masterful. You know, uh... I mean, then he, you know, then he, obviously, like I was talking about, he comes back, fights Bradley, the top pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world that, you know, he could fight, um, and the highest-ranked welterweight in the world that he could fight. You know, if he could have fought Mayweather, he would have fought him then. He couldn't, so he takes on the fucking best guy in the world that he can fight. Uh, pound for pound, number two or three on everybody's list. Uh, the second best welterweight on everybody's list. Um, only guy above him was Floyd. Uh, he comes in there. You know, the first couple rounds were close. Manny puts on the gas, completely separates himself from Bradley, and blows him the fuck out the water for the rest of the fight. You got to realize uh, that that... That's a prime Bradley. Uh, in his mind, still undefeated Bradley. Uh, the most Bradley was so prepared for that fight. You know, he had already been in the ring with Manny once. He knew what to expect, so he could prepare for it so much better. And, you know, still just gets, like, just separate. The separation of class and Bradley is an a level pound for pound fighter. He's still up on the pound for pound list, I believe. You know what I mean? Uh, this guy is, and rightfully so, he's you know the third third best welterweight in the world. You know, like like hands down. Um, and Manny just completely poof, blew 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 right past him. You know, you can see the class difference. It's like they almost didn't even belong in the ring together, but they did. You know, uh, Bradley's as is, is good as you can get uh, right now. But, you know, Manny is a level above. A level above. Uh, then you can look at someone like at that exact same time. Floyd was fighting uh, Marcos Maidana. You know, uh, someone who has the heart of a lion just like Bradley. But nowhere near the skill set. Uh... 
and had a tough fight with him. You know, a tough fight. Uh, if my Donna would have had more a full camp, he only had a five week camp for that first fight. If he would have had a full eight week camp, and could you imagine if he would have had like a ten week camp and had enough energy to you know sustain his game plan for that full fight? Uh, he probably would have won the fight. You know, you got to think of that. You know, Manny fought the best guy, period, that he could. Uh, the best guy other than Floyd Mayweather. He fought him, dusted him. You know, Floyd fights just, you know, an average contender, a blown-up 140-pounder, um, just a hard puncher, plotter, slow, uh, aggressive, but nothing special. You know, a one-trick pony type fighter. And had trouble, you know, had trouble with him. Uh, then he fucking rematches him, has, you know, some help from Kenny Bayless, and says it himself. He ranked his performance a C minus, his worst performance ever. Uh, so instead of coming back like Floyd normally does, if he has a tough fight with someone and he does rematch him, I mean, he only did it with Castillo, but, you know, he lost, in my opinion, the first fight with Castillo came back and won uh, clearly in the second fight. And I think that was Floyd's greatest performance because he showed, you know, this guy beat him. I don't care what anyone says, Castillo fucking won that fight. Everyone knows it. Uh, if you're a Floyd fan, you should say he lost that fight and say, whoa, look how good he was. Uh, you know, it shows that he, he can step it up. When the time counted, you know, this guy beat him and he stepped it up came back, rematched him immediately, and clearly beat him. And that's why I think that's, you know, Floyd's be best performance. Uh, because he showed a guy, he can beat a guy clearly who beat him. He adapted, adjusted, beat him. You know, everyone expected that with Maidana too. That's why, you know, no one was really interested in the fight. Because they, everyone was like, yeah, Floyd's gonna come in, just outbox the guy. It's gonna be a you know, eight to two kind of fight. What's the point of even watching it? Um, and and it was like that, but at the same time, it wasn't. We no one expected Bayless to do what he did, um, and no one expected Floyd to be holding so much and making it so ugly, uh, like he was, you know to get rocked and almost KO'd, um, to, you know, hold over 70 fucking times in a 12-round fight, uh, to do his whole pot shot grab, and that ain't what I expected. I thought Floyd was just gonna dance around and, you know, pot shot the shit out of him, uh, you know, lay on the ropes a little bit, go back to pot shot the shit out of him. You know, instead it was pot shot hold, pot shot hold. It was like fucking welterweight Vladimir Klitschko, man. It was bad. You know, it was bad, and he rated it himself. His worst performance ever, C minus. Uh, and that shows, I mean, you know, Floyd has slipped more than Manny. Uh, you know, Manny comes back and fights the best guy he can. If... To get the equivalent of that, you know, Floyd would have had to fight fought Bradley, but <clears throat> someone around that time, maybe uh, around that time, you know, if he would have fought someone like Alara, you know, um, maybe someone like, oh man, who was who was on top at that time? It wasn't many people. It was a bunch of young guns coming up. Uh, like Thurman and stuff like that. Thurman was just too green then. Um, I mean, Amir Khan, that's who he was supposed to fight. Uh, may, yeah, maybe Amir Khan. You know, Amir Khan and Bradley should have fought a, a long time ago, and they should still fight at Welter. That'd be a great fight. So maybe if you would have fought Amir Khan, you know, and just blew him out the water, uh, and showed a clear separation of class, uh, like, um, you know, Manny did with Bradley, and especially since, you know, Khan, uh, 
beat Madonna and then Floyd fights the loser rather than the winner. Uh, that didn't make much sense to me, especially when he puts a poll up and asks, who do you want me to fight? And everyone picks Khan, the winner of their fight, and he picks the fucking loser that no one wanted to see him fight. You know, uh, I think he thought more people were going to pick uh, Maidana because he just beat Broner. So people, like casual fans, were going to be like, oh my god, he just beat Broner, uh, so he can probably beat Floyd. Not realizing the guy's a blown up 140 pounder, and you know, uh, Broner ain't fucking Floyd. The bottom line, and he didn't think people would realize that, and people did. So, you know, no one wanted to see him fight fucking my Donna. And when you give us choices, give us more than two guys, you know, uh, and fight the guy we tell we want you to fight. You know, he picked a complete other guy and then had a tough fight. You know, so he probably does wish he would have fucking picked uh, Khan, and especially at that time, because Khan wasn't as good at that time as he is now. You know, uh, if he can get this W on Manny, then he's, well, what's he going to have to do, fight Khan? Then, I mean, it, it's crazy, you know. Bad. Uh, anyway, I'm getting way off track, you know. Um but, you know, yeah, Manny comes in, fights the fucking best guy he can, shows a huge class separation, uh, and shows how great he uh, really is, you know. And Floyd's struggling with uh, a B-level fighter, man, you know. Uh, you know, then he was supposed to fight Ruslan, a fight at the time that everyone wanted to see. Don't forget that. Everyone wanted to see Manny and Ruslan at that time. Um, but Ruslan fucking was just supposed to dust off a tune-up and then that fight would be made, but, you know, the the Apple Karkov fucking flipped over and, you know, he lost Algieri. Uh, I thought he won the fight. I thought Ruslan won the fight, but, you know, uh, it could have went either way. You know, and being that it was an either way type, they're in Algeria's hometown, he got the decision. You know, it's just how it goes. And, you know, Manny can't fight Heyman fighters, man. And don't forget it, you know, the those top ranking Heyman fighters, it don't happen. You know, once in a blue fucking moon. He's not going to put any of his welterweights in there with Manny Pacquiao. You know, if they're going to lose, they're going to lose to one of his guys. Okay, that way he can get the... he has the winner also. You know, it's it's just the way it is, man. Um, so he had the fight. He, I mean, Marquez, he wanted Marquez instead of Bradley, uh, first off. Marquez wouldn't do it. They offered him a career-high payday. So he beats Bradley, gets a title. Marquez says back then that he would never retire until he wins a welterweight title. Well, Manny had a welterweight title, and again, they offered him a career-high payday again, and Marquez still turned him down. So it tells you right there, Marquez knows what will happen if he rematches him, okay? So he's just saying, hey, uh, I, I got a great win the last time out. I'm not spoiling it by getting my ass knocked out this time, because I'm not going to land that shot two times in a row, you know, so, I mean, it tells you what it is right there, uh, so he couldn't get fucking Marquez again, so he got stuck, you know, fighting Algeri, um, and, you know, it's, that, that's what it was, you know, uh, you know, so, so, like I said, at the time, he could only fight Algeri, but uh, thank God he did because, you know, the epic fucking beatdown he laid on Algeria was the the springboard for the, you know, the outpouring of um, fans and, uh, you know, the clamoring and demanding for Floyd to finally fight Manny. You know, it took four months of fucking fans and media alike pressuring Floyd uh, to not fight Miguel Cotto to, to fight Manny and eventually, you know, uh, the fight got made, you know, so, oh, and thank Leslie Moonves for that, because if Leslie, if Leslie Moonves wasn't involved, this fight would not be made, uh, Moonves forced Floyd to take this fight, you know, even in the new Bernard Hopkins, uh, uh, interview with Fight Hype, 
he straight says, you know, uh, Manny believes Floyd was forced to take this fight. Uh, whether that's true or is not, that's, you know, he's like, it's here nor there. You know, he's saying he was forced, but he's being nice about it. Okay, you don't want to come out and fucking be ignorant like that, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's it's known, okay. It's like, he, he was forced to take the damn fight. Um, and, you know, he... It's happening, you know, so it's like, you know, uh, if, he, if he didn't fight him, him, him and Al Heyman were going to get fucked up uh, on, on the CBS deal and Floyd would have been uh, possible repercussions for a Showtime contract and, and everything, you know, so uh, the, 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 f the fight was, you know, the, Moonves had leverage, <coughs> especially with the CBS deal. You know, and, and remember, you know, uh, only two of Showtime's cards were in the fucking top 15 most viewed and not one in the top 10. So they needed to make money back, not only off Heyman, but off Floyd as well for his two pay-per-view cards that failed and lost them $16 million. And Heyman's and Espinosa's little journey with their shit ratings really fucked Showtime up. Uh, so all around, you know, that whole squad... They owed Moonves big, okay, and he got this fight made. Because, uh, you know, a a HBO Boxing had 13 out of 15 and really just, like like I said, well, said it before, just wiped him out with uh, Showtime. Um, but, like, in Espinosa, I don't know about CBS, but if, if your ratings are that bad, uh, I know my company, they'll fucking can your ass in a heartbeat for that kind of a performance. But uh, back, uh, back, back to Manny and Floyd. I, I keep getting off fucking topic. You know, Flo Floyd's been like the same fighter since uh, his, you know, first fucking title. Uh, at, like, in my opinion, no, except I think he was better back then. You know, I really think he was a better fighter at 130, 135, 140 uh, than he is today. You know, Manny, uh, on the other hand, um, is an entirely different animal today, uh, and much better, you know, the dude is, like, so talented, as I explained, you know, in, in a previous video, that, you know, he is a lightweight, uh, dominating the welterweight division, and if you didn't see, um, the video, the, about him being a lightweight in the welterweight division and dominating it, uh, I'll have the link in the description box for this video so you can see that. Because trust me, he is still a lightweight uh, fighting welterweights. You know, which is fucking scary when you think about it uh, on how talented he must be. You know, <clears throat> but but in short, you know, uh, I'll break it down for you real quick. You know, Manny entered the ring at, at 148 pounds after rehydrating when he beat, beat David Diaz. You know, so he entered the ring against D David Diaz weighing 148 pounds. When he fought Margarito, a junior middleweight, he entered the ring at 148 pounds. The same weight he fought lightweight at against the junior middleweight. All right, Margarito weighed 165 when he entered the ring. You know, that's fucking crazy. You know, what dude, he could have, uh, he could have weighed in at the lightweight limit the day before, you know, and came in the very next day and beat a fucking junior middleweight. You know, the best lightweight in the world right now is Terrence Crawford. Could he do that? Could he do that? No, I don't think he could. And I think Terrence Crawford is fucking amazing, but I don't think he could. I don't think he could. That's hard to do, man. Uh, could he do that and come in and beat any 140-pounder? I think he could do that without a doubt. You know, but a very solid, sturdy, tough 147-pounder? Uh, yeah, that's a little... No, I don't know about all that. You know, um, so basically, you know, the guy never uh, outgrew the lightweight division. You know, uh, he's just great enough to soundly beat welters, um, you know, the best welters in the world while being a lightweight. Uh, so, 
You know, it's crazy, man. I like I said, you know, margarita weighed a buck sixty five. Even Kodo rehydrated to a buck sixty something. I mean, so he's great enough to make the you know, the eight age old adage of, you know, the good big big man always beats the good little man to to just flip it on its head and say, Not true. And if I'm more talented than you, you can have all the weight you want, I'm still gonna whoop your ass. Alright, and that's the thing. You know, um, you know, not, not, oh my god. Not to mention that a fucking lightweight broke a junior middleweight's face bone. You know, the orbital bone, but he fucking broke his face bone, man. Uh, that's, you know, that's not an easy thing to do, oh, being a fucking lightweight. You know, uh, that's, you're, you're hitting with some serious force, uh, only weighing 148 pounds. And probably by the time he broke that face bone, he was probably down to 145 from all sweating, you know. Uh, so, hey, you know, and that fucking and bust in his eye, he made him partially blind in his eye, you know. And that, that fight should have ended Margarito's career since he didn't have the proper vision needed to get licensed. But fucking did anyway for the Kodo fight. And, uh, you know, the commissioner got in big trouble. Um, for, for, for that, you know, uh, that, for giving Margarito the license to, 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 to fight, you know, that, that's a whole another video, because that's some wild ass shit there, uh, you know, corruption and, you know, payoffs and, like, please do me this favor type thing, I, I don't even know, but, you know, uh, but j just to show, how good uh, Margarito still was when Manny, you know, beat the living hell out of him. Uh, and, you know, should, or should, should I say, you know, destroyed him? Because that's what ended his career. Um, but look, he, he, Margarito was still good enough, real good, when Manny fought him. Because think of this. Fucking Manny busted his face damaged his eye, and then <clears throat> they get Kodo, you know, his redemption, uh, revenge fight for the loaded gloves incident. So Kodo gets his rematch with him, uh, and he's fighting a Margarito with a partially fucking blind eye, you know, not fully blind, but the vision is damaged, uh, and, you know, to get his revenge win, and he's in a tough tough, tough fight. I mean, there was moments there, you know, where it looked like Margarito, without cementing his gloves, was gonna, you know, tire out Kodo, and then put it on him again. Uh, but, you know, it didn't happen, and Kodo got the victory. Um, very, very hard-fought victory with, you know, partially uh, fucked-up-eyed Margarito. Um, so, I mean, if, if, if it's that tough for Kodo after his eyes damaged, th then he was obviously still very good when Manny fought him. You get what I'm saying? Um, I mean, Manny truly is a level above these guys, you know, a level above these guys. I'm not saying he's a level above Floyd. I'm just saying the other guys. Floyd is also a level above these guys, but we didn't get to see Floyd fight a lot of the guys we wanted to see him fight. You know, like Margarito, um, like a, a prime Kodo. You know, you know a lot of guys. I'm not even gonna get into that again. You know, um, and 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 with how good uh, Manny looked in 2014. And, you know, with the desire he's always had to fight and beat Floyd. Um, him promising his son that he would beat Floyd and the drive he's showing in this camp. You know, and Floyd didn't get a head start in training for this fight like he usually does either. So he's going to be facing, you know, uh, a fully prepared fighter. And, you know, that fighter is Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Manny was training every day for three, like, at least three weeks back in the Philippines, um, before he even hit the wild card. That's why, uh, when he showed up in camp at the wild card, he showed up in great, such great shape already, you know. Um, Manny, 
well, not Manny, but his uh his people or something like that. They have a, um a YouTube channel. You know, I'm sub to it. I, I can't remember the damn name though. Uh, but they put videos of them up constantly. But a lot of them are from back in the Philippines. Like they put them up, you know, weeks later. Uh, I guess not to give away too much. But when he was back in the the Philippines, he was looking fantastic then. You know, I'd really like to see him hitting the mitts and sparring right now. I, he has to look fucking fantastic. Because, uh, like I said, he looked fantastic then. Uh, they, sh they, they wanted, Roach said they wanted a 10-week camp. Uh, they got it. You know, they got their 10-week camp. They didn't get 10 weeks, you know, at the wild card. But the way I look at it, they really had 11 weeks of training, three without Roach. Uh, you know, eight with Roach. So I guess that kind of evens out to, you know, a 10-week camp. You, know, you cannot argue with the preparation time because he had more than enough time to prepare. So they, there can be no excuses over preparation uh, at all. Um, you know, Manny, the, if, if anyone saw that clip of Manny hitting that fucking heavy bag uh, with like over 130 hard fast punches and I think it was around 35 seconds um, and he still was four weeks out from the fight with like you know four weeks to still sharpen up to still improve uh, still work on the game plan I mean damn I, I, I don't understand how other people just don't see uh, you know, the trouble that Floyd is going to be in on March 2nd. I mean, you look at his previous opponents and how difficult uh, they were for him. Then you look at Manny and everything that, that you wish, like, or you would have said, well, if my Donna had this, he could have done, done this and won. Manny has all of that. All of that. Uh, so as long as he comes with the correct game plan, and executes it and doesn't like lose focus. I don't see how the guy loses. I just don't. You know, a lot of people are saying it's a 50 50 fight, and it, it is, I guess, because anything can happen, and we don't know how their styles are going to mesh. Um, but one of them, I believe, is just going to completely take control. You know, either Floyd is just going to completely take control and have Manny's number. Uh, or Manny is just going to completely take control and have Floyd's number. You know, I really don't think it's going to be like a, a Manny Marquez thing where, uh, you know, they, they're just matched up evenly and perfectly. I just think one of these guys is going to get really beat, like, fucked up, you know? Um, this isn't Hagler Hearns, or this isn't, you know, uh, Duran Leonard. Even though we'd like it to be Duran Leonard. You know, this is Manny and Floyd at the later end of their career. Um, one of these guys is just going to, you know, have lost a step. And the other is not going to have lost as big of a step. And I think that's going to be the difference to just give that fighter the, you know, the win. You know, the, the little extra that they need to be able to do whatever they want. You know, and in my mind, in my breakdown, I see that fighter being Manny Pacquiao. Like, I just, I, I try breaking it down for Floyd. You know, um, I just can't. I, that's the outcome I see, man. Let me know what you guys think about anything I talked about here. I meant to keep this video at 20 minutes, and I just fucking rambled. Uh, but I'll still put this up, even though I probably should not put it up for you guys in case someone wants to listen to it. I know a lot of you have long work days, and you say you like hearing the long ones. So here you go. Uh, Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Stay safe till next time. Peace.